Now we are going to see about the theorist Sister Calista Roy. She was a nurse theorist, writer, lecturer, researcher and teacher. She was a professor and nurse theorist at the Boston College of Nursing in Chestnut Hill. Born at Los Angeles on October 14, 1939, she got master's degree in pediatric nursing from University of California, Los Angeles in 1966, master's and PhD in sociology in 1973 and 1977. And the adaptation model of nursing was developed by Sister Calista Roy in 1976. So this is about the theorist. Now we are going to the theory. First of all, we will see about the statement of the theory. So students, you uh, write down this and you have to learn this. The goal of nursing is to promote adaptation for individuals and groups in each of the four adaptive modes that is physiological needs, self-concepts, role function and interdependent relations, thus contributing to health quality of life and dignity with dying. So the concept of this theory is that in the statement she is stressing on three main concepts. That is first is promote adaptation. Second is adaptation in four adaptive modes. First mode is physiological needs. Second mode is self-concept. Third is role confusion. And the fourth mode, mode is interdependent relations. So once a person achieve adaptation in these four modes, what is the like an output is that contributing to health quality of life and dignity with dying. So this is about the statement of the theory and in the concept of the theory according to the according to sister Calista is that promoting adaptation in four modes in order to achieve health quality of life. Hope you understand this. Next is about this Roy adaptation model. It focuses on the interrelatedness of four adaptive systems. So we have seen this four adaptive system and this four adaptive system is interrelated. So it is a directive theory based on nursing practice. So according to Calista Roy, the first concept is adaptation. So you might be knowing about this adaptation. Adaptation is responding positively to environmental ch changes. So this is about the Roy's model and the Roy's model consists of an input, control process, effectors and output. So you can see this diagram. So you need to learn this diagram. So in this diagram you can see the input next control process effectors and output so in this input you can see about stimuli so according to sister Calista Roy there are three different stimulus and these three different stimulus according to this stimulus pay, uh, the person is undergoing certain control process and control process in the control process you can see mainly coping mechanisms so coping mechanisms are mainly regulator and cognitor and uh, so it leads to effectors in four interdependent mode. The four modes we have already seen that is physiological functions, self-concept, role function and interdependence. So uh, with the help of these effectors we can see an output. Either this output may be adaptive or ineffective responses. So whatever, if it is adaptive or ineffective anyway, again you can see the feedback, again it leads to the stimuli. Okay. So this is about the model. You can see the input, control process, effectors and output. So we are going to see one by one. First is about input. 
So stimulus, I have already told you that there are three different stimulus. First is focal stimulus, second contextual stimulus, third residual stimulus. It's very easy to understand. Focal stimulus that is the degree of change or stimulus most immediately confronting the person. So that is a primary problem. And the one to which the person must make an adaptive response. That is a factor that precipitates behavior. Second is contextual stimuli. All other stimuli present that contribute to the behavior caused or precipitated by the focal stimuli. So he, this is the what secondary problem or associated problems. Next is residual stimuli. That is the factors that may be affecting behavior but whose efforts are not validated. I will explain this with an example so that you can uh, understand in a better way. So for example, a person coming to an antenatal OPD with uh, uh, that's a pregnant mother that's coming with nausea and vomiting. And the primary problem she is addressing is the focal stimuli, that is the nausea and vomiting. So when we go for uh, history taking and we, and we assess uh, the problem, uh, we can see what are the like uh, other factors that lead to the problem. And that is the contextual stimuli. That may be any smell of any particular food or improper nutritional habits or maybe she, not, she may not be willing to be pregnant or uh, like uh, uh, see, uh, she's not adapting to the pregnancy or um, maybe she uh, is very much concerned about the health of the newborn, health of the baby or uh, like uh, impaired relationship with the spouses, family, colleagues. So all these factors may be leading her to the focal stimuli. And next is, last is the residual stimuli. That is, this residual stimuli, stimulus is some of the hidden beliefs of the person or improper knowledge. Next we are going to see the subsystem or the process. In the subsystem you can see first is cognitive subsystem and the cognitive subsystem from the term itself we can understand that is a major copying process involving four cognitive emotive channels that is perceptual and information processing, learning, judgment and emotion. Okay, so when we uh, speak about this example, this pregnant lady, she is coming with nausea and vomiting and she is adapting to the situation in a positive way after understanding, yeah, this is normal in pregnancy and these are very minor ailments of pregnancy and so that is the and with the help of reasoning, information processing, learning, judgment and emotion. So this is the cognitive subsystem. Next we are going to the regulator subsystem. It is a basic type of adaptive process that responds automatically through neural, chemical and endocrine copying channels. So as, as the pregnant mother progresses pregnancy, she responds automatically with the help of uh, endocrine factors, with the help of uh, maternal hormones and all. And she realized that, yeah, it is quite normal in pregnancy. So, <coughs> next we are going to see what are the four adaptive modes. That is, physiological mode involve the body's basic needs and ways of dealing with adaptation in regard to first fluid and electrolytes, exercise and rest, elimination, nutrition, circulation and oxygen and regulation which includes the senses, temperature and endocrine regulation. So we were uh, speaking about the pregnant mother's example. So how this um, nausea and vomiting leads to the impairment in physiological mode that is uh, dehydration, fluid and electrolytes, exercise and rest, elimination, nutrition, circulation and oxygen and regulation in senses, temperature and endocrine regulation. Next is about self-concept mode. The composite of 
beliefs and feelings that one holds about oneself at a given time it is formed from perceptions particularly of others reaction and directs one's behavior so how that uh, gra- uh, antenatal mother has conceived herself in a, uh, in that particular state like whether a sick roll or uh, or she is a, a pregnant mother uh, what is her self concept next is about role performance mode role function is the performance of duties based on given positions in society uh, uh, but uh, that is uh, example itself when we speak up, uh, about that example that pregnant mother whether he is achieving her role as a uh, as a housewife or in her job or uh, how uh, in her family next is interdependence mode involves one's relations with significant others and support system how the relations or the communication of the pregnant mother with others in the family or with other healthcare workers so this is about the adaptive modes next so this is the roy adaptation model students this is very important you have to learn this you have to draw this that is the stimuli okay first we can see the stimuli it is as a nurse we have to assess the uh, focal stimuli contextual stimuli and residual stimuli and next is the coping process like in uh, all this mode physiological mode self concept mode role function and interdependence and you can see this is interdependent uh, modes and so after the scoping process what is the output or what is the behavior so what are the responses it may be adaptive responses or ineffective responses what is adaptive response responses that promote integrity of the person in terms of goals of survival growth reproduction and mastery second is ineffective responses responses that do not contribute to adaptive goals that is survival growth reproduction and mastery next we are going to see the meta paradigms of roy's adaptation model in person environment health and nursing in person so according to calista roy person is a bio psychosocial being in constant interaction with a changing environment so this model include person as individual as well as in groups such as families organization and communities next is about the environment so the environment all conditions circumstances and influences and Uh, that is related to the focal contextual and residual stimuli next is the health inevitable dimension of person's life and it is represented by a health illness continuum so the health according to calista roy is a state and a process of being and becoming integrated and whole so the last that is nursing so as we have seen in the statement part that is this theory promote adaptation in the four adaptive modes and contributing to health quality of life and dying with dignity so this is these are 10 major assumptions of the theory and uh, uh, like uh, it is not necessary that you have to mug up all these assumptions it is just for your um, uh, referral the person is a bio psychosocial being person is in constant interaction with a changing environment to cope with a changing world a person uses coping mechanism health and illness are inevitable dimensions of a person life in order to respond positively to environmental changes a person must adapt a person's adaptation is a function of the stimulus he is exposed to and his adaptation level the range of stimulation that will lead to a positive response there are four modes of adaptation nursing accept the humanistic approach and there is a dynamic objective for existence with the ultimate goal of achieving dignity and integrity 
Next, we are coming going to the nursing process. There are six step of nursing process according to the adaptation model. Students, this is very important. First level of ass assessment, which addresses the patient's behavior. Second level of assessment, which addresses the patient's stimuli. Here, we have to assess the focal, uh, contextual and residual stimuli. Next, according to the assessment, we are diagnosing the patient and setting goal for the patient's health interventions to take actions in order to meet those goals and finally evaluation of the result to determine if goals were met so i have referred these all these books so this is about roy's adaptation model hope you all have understood we have seen the basic concept of the uh, uh, theory that is about the input stimulus and the process and four adaptive modes and the output and how it is in a nursing meta paradigms and the nursing process hope you all understood thank you